Coming up, Ipswich business confidence remains high nearly three years into COVID, with 75% of local firms optimistic for the year ahead. In this Ipswich Today exclusive, you'll hear highlights from Top Office Group's annual survey of business sentiment across the city and region. It's Tuesday, December 6, 2022, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. Ipswich's annual survey of business sentiment and trends has been released. Top Office Group's Executive Outlook is in its 14th year. Company Director Jan Gadsden joins me to discuss the very latest views from business leaders across the region. Thanks for speaking with Ipswich today, Jan. Oh, thank you, Alan, for the opportunity. It's been 12 months since we last spoke. Boy, it goes by quickly. And this year is the 14th year of Executive Outlook. Are business confidence levels up, down or much the same? This year, we've interviewed 78 business leaders in different sectors across our region, and we found sentiment is upbeat. Inflation's a big deal, but pipelines are solid. 75% of local firms are optimistic, 20% neutral, 5% concerned, and there are specific areas of growth. And what would they be? We found demand for industrial space and developments in the Western Corridor is, is buzzing. You just need to take a drive through Carroll Park. It's quite full on. And that's flowing on to your service outlets, legal, finance sectors. They're thriving. IT firms are flat out just keeping us safe right now with this explosion in cybercrime. I'm glad you mentioned the the cybersecurity aspect. It certainly is a big one, Jan. Now more high profile than ever with the likes of Medibank and Optus. What should businesses be focusing on in that area? Cybersecurity has got us all on edge with these data breaches, ransomware, spoofing and phishing attacks. They've exploded, which is all about identity theft and, and monetizing data. I guess the worry is Optus and Medicare, are just Medibank are just the ones that we know about, but most don't get reported. There's too much on the line. Mm. And I guess from the perspective you're asking me, it really brings home the critical importance of, of software updates, multi-factor authentication, uh, backups and, and using unique passwords to try and secure and protect our business. Our last line of defence really is the human brain. So if you don't know, don't click. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Apart from cybersecurity, what are the other top challenges that have been identified for businesses both large and small? The standout challenge and, and constraint to business growth right now is labour shortages. I mean, everyone with a pulse has a job, right? So leaders told us it's Easy to get work, the market's hot, need more staff, everything else is manageable and that balance has shifted in favour of employees and and they know it. So, I mean, who could dream unemployment would fall to 3.4%? Got job switching, counter offers, poaching, it's all happening. And what are the business owners telling you about, say, the next 12 months? Is that going to ease or do they see it being much the same in terms of the the pressures on finding staff? There doesn't seem to be any short-term fix. And there is a reason for this. We're fighting fighting the demographic tide. So you've got boomers en masse taking early or they took early retirement payouts in COVID and much of the generation down. And that was a lot of knowledge walking out the door. So as for dragging us back out of our comfort zones, forget it. Grows on you really quickly. So staff shortages are top of the list. What else is coming into the field of operational constraints for businesses? Okay. Well, staff shortages first and foremost. Cyber crimes, the next challenge keeping us awake at night. And also keeping up with technology was mentioned a lot, as were the, the regulations and That was followed by falling consumer demand, which is a trend to watch in this environment. I notice in the past when you've conducted Executive Outlook, Jan, you get a bit of a gauge of hiring intentions. 
uh, are businesses holding their cards close to their chest on that score or do you have some new information? Hiring intention, 63% of leaders plan to grow headcount, which is really high. So um, 31% said no change, 6% said the decreased staff. So the vast majority are planning to grow headcount if they can find the people. We're engaging contractors and outsourcing as, as needed, but they're light on the ground as well. So I guess our advice there is to bolster career pathways, training, incentives and flexible work. So it's not just about money. There's a report out this week saying that Medicare is not fit for purpose, Jan. And of course, that affects the whole health sector. What have you found in the health sector in Ipswich and the region? It is a worry. We interviewed leaders in health, aged care and disabilities where demand really is next level. So health workers are exhausted, clinics are desperate for GPs. Personally, I can't see why they can't simplify red tape and visas to entice more overseas doctors. But our survey also confirmed the acute shortages of nurses, doctors, allied health, aged care and disability teams across the region, and they're all crippled by understaffing. Remote work surged under COVID lockdowns. COVID is still very much with us. We're just handling it a different way. Has remote work created a permanent new way of working? Has it eased back? There's no one size fits all here, but most business leaders are offering those flexible work options in order to retain their staff and um, basically saying to us, it's now integral to business. There's really no choice. But overall, leaders find that their staff prefer the office. Mm. So productivity is higher with that greater collaboration. It's a complex issue, Alan, but we are making progress on this blend of work from home and getting people together. We just need to be crystal clear about KPIs and expectations. Was there any indication about a a favourite time of the week to work from home? I'm thinking a Monday or Friday might be on the list. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Well, one business owner told us about one of their staff members that suffers Monday-itis, so they (laughs) re-rostered around that. But then it also appears that um, Friday is not so popular with the team either on the whole, so Um, I think they have an acronym for this, but I'm not going to say it on air. Okay, no problem. We'll leave it there. But it's called (laughs) Tune. Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays, and it's abbreviated. (laughs) Looking at retail, last year online shopping was at record levels. Have people eased back on that and gone back to the shops, or have we seen what that's going to look like? Well, certainly there's a trend back to the shops, I would say, and retail trends definitely are up. And they're certainly expecting, you know, bumper times just given the Black Friday sales, Cyber Monday and now moving into Christmas. I guess the concern there with those retail trends is that it is discretionary spend and people are watching their pennies. So I guess it depends where where that's going to go. I've got to say the Executive Outlook survey is quite unique. I've not heard of uh, such a, uh, a focused survey on a city or a region. So congratulations on conducting it for the 14th year. What are the key takeaways from the 2022 survey? Just to kick back a moment, we've just come through this everything shortage with supply chains, products, housing, workers. That's been driven by the massive injections of COVID stimulus. And then we've thrown into the mix deficits and a war and natural disasters and inflation soared. So... In terms of the key takeaways, local firms are dealing with these spikes in wages, um, insurance, fuel and power costs, but we're not expecting that to last. So once the frenzy is over, we'll go back to what we used to. The cost pressure, however, that's rattling leaders most is this push for higher wages, which is a bit like don't get me started. Mm -hmm. So we're hearing that inflation's temporary, but you can't reduce wages. And it's a merry dance of competition for staff and higher wages, which is making it harder to to grow our businesses. And there's a struggle to match competitor salaries, which then, of course, implicates turnover. We found 33% of local firms expect staff turnover to increase 
So it's quite a flighty market and there's a lot of frustration and angst that is attached to this dilemma and this came through loud and clear. In terms of being hard to find talent that really value and appreciate having a job. Now, that would be the key takeaway this year. Uh, we've certainly never seen anything like it at top office in our 34 years history of recruiting and training talent. Mm. So that was really um, the standout. We also found that just you're looking at the overall trends, the work's gone hybrid, talent's hard to find, inflation's a big deal, power's um, set to surge, and data security's got us all unhinged. So they're sort of factors that are, are playing into this, and most of which is outside of our control, but we can, of course, control our connections in the community. And that's why we are so passionate about Executive Outlook, barometer of trends and forum to share ideas and to keep us connected to our community. And finally, Jan, I know one of your favourite slides to show when you do the presentation is the is the debt around the world. Can you just scare us a little bit with some numbers there? Mm, it is scary, Alan. This is the most overleveraged economy ever. America's nudged thirty two trillion, and these debts have grown faster than the economy for decades. So central banks print more money for governments to service debts. It's unsustainable. Guess it makes our one trillion govy debt look like petty cash. But taxes and commodities are strong, so all good. Hopefully. Hopefully. And on that note, Jan Gadsden, thanks so much for speaking with Ipswich today. Thank you so much, Alan. You'll find a link in the show notes to highlights from the Executive Outlook Survey. Ipswich today is supported by Kinetics people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is also listener-supported. Please make a once-only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au and click the Donate button on the homepage to make a payment through PayPal. Follow and stream this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio and Amazon Music. Or play Ipswich today on smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening.